So welcome to the course. What I'd like to do is start off by talking a bit about what this course is all about and kind of the big picture overview of what we're going to try and cover and the, the general theme for the entire course. So first what I want to do is just mention what are our learning goals, right? What is it we're going to try and achieve through the duration of this course? So the first thing we want to do is we're going to learn to perform and interpret. Linear regression analysis. Wait, scratch that. Regression. Linear regression will be one of the topics. We're going to learn to perform and interpret regression analysis. As it applies to health research. All right, so first. Um, both performing the analysis, fitting regression models, as well as interpreting the output. So trying to be producers and consumers of statistical analyses. We want to learn how to communicate effectively with a statistician or analysis um, analyst. Communicate effectively with a statistician or analyst. So a large number of you might not be doing the analyses yourself, you might be working with a team, and you might be needing to um, convey your ideas and have conversations with the statistician or the, anal the analyst on the team, and we'd like to help you bridge that gap and be able to speak their language. Um, what we want to do is learn to um, relate. So, uh, relate epidemiological questions to regression models. And I'll expand on exactly what I mean by that in a second. So we want to relate epi questions to regression models. So stating that generically to start, we might have epi questions like, what effect does some exposure have on risk of disease? And we want to learn how to express that in terms of a regression model. So our why, I put in, in quotes there, is the outcome is fitting some regression model that looks like this. And this coefficient here is going to tell us what effect does this x1 variable have on the outcome. Okay, so learning how to take research questions and express them as statistical models that can help us try and answer that question. And so on the related note, we want to learn to interpret the regression coefficients, so these B or the true values, beta one. Right, so what are the interpretation of these coefficients? We're going to start to see that they, in general, tell us the effect of some variable on the outcome. When we look at, say, logistic regression, exponentiating these is going to give us odds ratios. Right, and odds ratio is something we learned about in the previous course. Um, so this sort of stuff. How do we fit the models to help us answer a question, and how do we interpret the model coefficients and so on. And then one of the final learning goals is to critically evaluate literature. All right, so again, when you read a paper and you see some of these models that we're going to talk about being used, to be able to think about did, were they used well or not, what were some of the limitations and things like these. So to be able to critique um, the use of these tools that we're going to see in the course. Um, just a quick note I want to add, the reason I'm writing in all caps is when I write in lowercase letters, my writing gets quite messy and hard to read. I find if I write in capitals, it's a lot easier to read my writing. So that's why I'm doing this. I'm not emphasizing every word and every sentence that I say. It just makes my writing more legible. Um, <clears throat> so these are the goals for the course. The course content, kind of the, the big picture, we're going to look at four, um, mainly look at four types of regression models. So the first is where our outcome variable is numeric. And analyzing numeric outcomes, we're going to look at linear regression. 
and some extensions. So what I mean by that is we're going to mainly talk about linear regression in this section of the course, but we'll touch on some of the extensions or fringe topics to it. We might talk a little bit about things like quantile regression or these other things that are very related to linear regression, but slight um, steps away from it. That's going to be about the first four weeks or first third of the course. Then we're going to look at outcomes that are binary. So 0, 1, yes, no, disease or not disease, these sorts of things. And in that section, we're going to focus on talking about logistic regression. And then we're going to talk a little bit about some extensions. And again, I should note the extensions are often going to be um, very brief or kind of pointing to here's further things you can learn about if you want to extend some of this knowledge. So we might talk a little bit about ordinal logistic regression or multinomial logistic regression, and mostly in concept of saying, here's the extension of the logistic regression model that um, you can learn a bit more about if you want. And I'll often try and point to some resources that can help you learn a bit more, but they won't be required course content. That again is gonna be about another four weeks or another third of the course roughly. Then we're gonna move into outcomes that are counts or rates. Person time data, like how long till some event occurs, what's birth rates, death rates, things like these. To do that, we're going to look at Poisson regression. Um, also, sometimes gets referred to as log linear regression. And again, some extensions there. So, we might talk a bit about uh, zero inflated Poisson regression or negative binomial regression. Again, just kind of pointing to those. And the final set of regression models we're going to look at is where we have time till event. So how long till someone dies, um, how long till someone contracts a disease, things like these waiting times, or time till event occurs. So this we're going to look at survival regression. So different survival regression models, Cox proportional hazards model, um, the Kaplan-Meier survival model, and again, pointing to some extensions. We'll talk about what those are when we get there, but um, things that branch off from some of these standard models that we're going to be looking at. And again, these final two are going to be lumped into about another four weeks of the course or another third of the course. So what I want to remind you of is you learned a bit about this previously. We're going to um, discuss it again in this course, but that regression models may be predictive or um, try to capture some effect size. Meaning, our goal may be to get a good prediction of the outcome, or our goal may be to try and estimate the effect size. What effect does some particular variable have on the outcome? So some examples to think of this. Um, something, I guess, that's topical, COVID. Right? A predictive model might be trying to look at predicting, is someone going to get COVID within the next year, yes or no? And, and what variables are good at predicting that? Okay, so what variables help you get a good guess at, will someone get COVID, yes or no? An effect size model, okay, looking at the same type of data, might be asking, um, we now have a vaccine. What's the effectiveness of it? If someone gets vaccinated or not, how much more or less likely are they to get COVID? Right, so what effect does vaccination have on your risk of getting it? So we're going to focus mostly in the course on um, try to estimate the effect size, but we are going to touch on predictive models as well. And I'll always try and point out the um, ideas we use for selecting variables. Um, if it's an effect size model or a predictive model, is going to be a little bit different. And just to kind of get at that idea, it, here's our outcome. I'm putting in quotes to keep it general, meaning it can be any particular type of outcome variable. 
And regression models typically look like this, B1 plus X1, B2 plus X2, and so on. When we're looking at a predictive model, our focus is on this outcome. What variables do we need to get a really good guess at what the outcome is going to be? When building an effect size model, our focus is going to be on what are these coefficients? What effect does, say, the x1 variable have on the outcome? And our variable selection is going to focus on trying to get an unbiased estimate of this effect. And so throughout the course, we'll, so we'll separate the two if we're talking about effect size models or predictive models and what some of the criteria for model building and variable selection are. So now I want to talk a little bit about the, um, I guess, big picture goals of the course. What are we going to try and achieve? Not in terms of learning outcomes, but um, what are we going to actually look at in the course? Stick around, guys. There's more to see, and please stay safe.